It's time for us to check out which have been the best and the worst performing bourses in Africa and also the trends for the month of September. There's the so-called September effect that actually in global markets in a good year or a bad year, September is likely to be the ominous month. So let's find out how September's fed for 2011. James White is a quantitative analyst at African Alliance Securities and he joins us now. James, it's great to have you. So apparently there's the so-called September effect. This is the month in any year, give or take, that is going to underperform. If ever there's going to be a battering, it will be in September. Did we live up to it this September? Uh, well, certainly. I think um, you know, in, in September we've seen, especially in the, in the global markets as well as the African markets, there's been a there's been a definite slump in performance as well as liquidity. Um, whether there's any truth in the in the history that <laughs> <laughs> September is a bad month, I don't know. But definitely this year it's it's been a poor one. Can you give us an indication of how how badly markets have been affected? Because of course we've got a slew of data that's come through. Ben Bernanke is not particularly encouraged by the state of the U.S. economy, um, inflation rising in economies like China, for instance. Europe still has its debt problems. Yes, indeed. Um, if you if you look at the world world equity markets, uh, you know the world index is down eight percent in uh, in September. Um, the FTSE is down five percent. Um, and it's just sort of led the way to, uh, for African markets. Um, you know, your, your flagship in North Africa, Egypt, is, is down 11% in September. Nigeria is down 5%. Kenya is down 5%. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been a bit of a battering across the board. And, uh, you know, it's on the back of the global trend. Right. Liquidity issues have really been a bugbear, particularly for markets like Egypt and Nigeria. Now, we know of the political turmoil and the uncertainty around where the elections will be held, when will they be held. Investors fence sitting in Nigeria. How significant is the liquidity crunch? Well, what, what we saw in, in Nigeria, you know, there was um, ahead of the CBN deadline for um, recapitalization in the banks. Um, I think a lot of investors were just playing a sort of wait and see game. Um, a lot of people wanted to see which way deals would go, um, see all the different banks, all their plans for recapitalization. Uh, I think what they were waiting for was for September to end, for those deadlines to pass. They knew what it, you know, where everything was going and then uh, you know, we'll see, we should hopefully see a return to liquidity there on that. Um, also what's happened is that there's, there's been a flight to safety. You know, foreign investors have pulled out, leaving the, a lot of the pension funds, local pension funds, mm -hmm sitting on cash, um, diverting to the fixed income markets. So, so you know, there's, there's just right. been... We've also seen, ironically, despite the state of the international markets, a uh, firmer dollar against major currencies. How badly impacted were African currencies? Well, you know, the, the currencies, uh, you know, a lot of them are quite, quite uh, you know, they, they, they took serious knocks against yeah. the dollar. Um, if you look at the s southern African region, the RAND was, was one that was a very poor, poor performer and of yeah. course linked to that is some of the neighboring countries. Um, Kenya shilling is, I think, the second worst performing currency on the, uh, in the world mm -hmm. if, and, and certainly the worst on the continent and not far behind that is the Ugandan shilling. Mm -hmm. um, Egypt has held up relatively stable. Um, Nigeria, not great as well. We've seen last week the, the central, bank, uh, central bank stepping in to take measures to to adjust the, right. the dollar. Dollar trades, um, or the value of dollar trades, is down 8.8% in terms of companies and how you quantify their values to the international investor. Uh, has that made them skeptical? Has, they, has that made them think, you know, there's no value in a market like Africa at the moment? Um, I, don't think, I don't think investors have lost sight of the fact that there's value in Africa. Um, I think they, they've just shifted to what they perceive as less risky assets mm -hmm. for the moment. Uh, I think we'll see, we'll definitely see a return to the markets by investors. Uh, you see, you get two types of Africa investors. You get one that are looking specifically at Africa, mm -hmm. and then you get your emerging markets investors. For the Africa-only investors, you know, they, they almost don't have a choice. They have to come in and come out when, you know, when they feel the timing is good and when the timing is right. Mm -hmm. uh, your EM players, they will, they will leave now when, when things don't look so great. When they come back will be uncertain if they even need to come back. And uh, sector-wise, it seems to be a trend that the banking stocks are the ones dragging down most of the uh, bourses in Africa. Do you concur with that view? And what needs to change in terms of risk aversion to financial services? Correct, correct. That that will be twofold. I mean, for the most part, the banking sector makes up a large portion of a lot of these markets. So if, if people are selling the more liquid stocks, the bigger stocks, those will be your banks. Mm -hmm. uh, so for a lot of investors, that's that's the first point of exit and the first point of entry. Um, Value-wise, I think the banks, they, you know, it's a, for African Alliance, we believe there's a lot of value in the banking sector. Mm 
Mm. Uh, with price action, recent price action, the banks have come a long way down, which, you know, if, if, the, if nothing's gone fundamentally wrong with these businesses, right. there's plenty of value to be unlocked again. Obviously, we know that most African countries are commodities exporters, and in boom periods, we really see a cash injection. Not quite so, except for gold. Gold seems to be holding up to some extent because of its safe haven status, but generally, how have resources fared? Uh, if you look at the resources stocks, especially in South Africa, they, they didn't perform particularly well in September. As you say, gold being a safe haven, uh, we've seen the gold price soar to record highs. It has come down in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, the other safe havens, dollar and yen, um, we've seen those fare relatively well. Mm. Um, you know, people are generally looking just for a, to avoid risk at the moment. So wherever they feel that there's low risk, that's where they'll be, and gold seems to have been the place in the last month.